Architects and engineers design buildings, but they only ever deliver paper. And that's quite a challenge to somehow uh, embody in those drawings all that will become bricks and mortar and places of occupation for people. My absolute top tip for a young practitioner would be to learn to draw. In practice, the older I get, the more I've been surprised at how uh, crucial drawing has been uh, in meetings with clients, with collaborators. You can cycle through ideas so much faster with a drawing than you can with a computer. It has the hand of the maker so visible in the drawing uh, from the beginning. When learning to draw, it's very useful to draw from physical objects that you can sit with and study very carefully. This student work here provides a great example where there's a really rich combination of timber, concrete with jesmonite, there's another type of timber. Quite an important threshold is to be able to look at something and to, with your pencil, as you engage the paper, to somehow try and mirror that rich physical presence that you're seeing with your eye. And these are exactly the challenges that the practitioner is presented with. But when you look at most practitioners' drawings, they lack this richness. And that's why it's very good when trying to improve uh, to go back to this, because you can see this richness is right in front of you, and it's very easy to compare your drawing to what you were studying and to ask why your drawing doesn't really have the richness that you're proposing. One of the most important things that you can do trying to learn to draw or improve your drawings is to look at as many drawings as you can and to analyze them. And I have here today uh, two drawings. Both of the drawings were made within a two-year period of each other. The first one that I'd like to show you is Michelangelo. This drawing is called A Bacchanal of Children, and it's a wild scene of uh, revelry. I'm not quite sure what lies behind the subject. I wanted to draw your attention to the way that uh, Michelangelo has modeled these figures. You can see just an excess of almost kind of um, balls of flesh that he's exaggerated. Every figure on this page has an abundance of Michelangelo's style of over-muscled. It always implies a sense of musculature, uh, whether we're able to critique it and to know it's accurate or not, it does somehow convince us uh, that he has seen something in the figure. Working at the same time in Florence was uh, this man, Jacopo Pontormo. Compare this now with the figures in Michelangelo and look at the uh, decisiveness with which he's just uh, wrapped that arm almost as a whole object now. He's not subdivided it into the uh, balls that we saw in Michelangelo's. You, you see this quality that I think is so important where Pontormo has empathized with this figure in a completely different way than what we saw in Michelangelo's drawing. Look at the way the foot is tucked behind the calf in such a realistic way the viewer is left with the impression that this man is completely engaged with his subject, and that's really where you've got to start when you're trying to learn to draw. Now, if we fast forward 500 years, I want to show you something that I stumbled across uh, recently, and it's the drawings of um, the architect Nicholas Grimshaw. And I'll just start with this drawing here that is of a door handle. You'll see that immediately he's given a sense of the different materiality that he's proposing for this. We see these uh, wood plates that are fastened with these two-hold screws, and the shading gives us a sense that the top of that handle has uh, been slightly curved. How quickly and easily he's able to give us a full sense of the physicality of that object is really inspiring. This is a great spread from Grimshaw's sketchbook. One of the qualities that an engineer and architect need to have is to be able to work at multiple scales. Here we see a site plan next to a section of this uh, media center for the performing arts in New York State. And look at the comfort uh, with which on the right side we have the site plan. We see the curve of the access roadway and then in the section drawing we have the uh, performance hall, we always have a sense of 
uh, the physicality of the, ob the objects, all done with biro, no fussy use of material. And you can just see the kind of fearless um, commitment to putting information on the page. And that level of decisiveness is exactly what we saw in Pontomo's drawing. And uh, it's interesting to look at um, people's drawings that are learning to draw. And the single most important first hurdle is just to draw decisively. Forget the accuracy, just put it on the page, one line, confidently, and it will carry so much more credibility. In this film, we focused on line, and we've seen some exceptional examples of how line can be used to underpin an entire drawing. In my next film, I'll show you how to put this technique and this sensibility into your own drawing, and it will come alive for you very quickly.